So I thought what I would talk about is um, how can you make a button for Adobe Muse uh, inside of Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is talk about one of my favorite websites, Flat Icon, which allows you to get and download um, vector icons that you can use in um, your projects. The thing is, is I really like this FI plugin. And so what I thought I would do is I would start by cr just creating a, um, a new document in Photoshop. And once I've created that new document in Photoshop, I I'm just going to leave it at 300 by 300 at 150. It's a little higher resolution for than what I need. But for what I'm doing, I think it'll be fine. And so now I've got that there. Now the next thing I've got is that's the flat icon plugin. And what that allows me to do is to search through all the many different flat icons that can be out there that I can use. So well, the first thing I want to do is find something that I might want to make uh, interactive. So I'm going to actually type in home and you can see it's giving me a ton of different home and it's going to go out and it's going to research and try and find me a home and I'm going to look through to find a, a nice home one that I like. Um, I want it to be solid and with a chimney so I'm going to actually select that one. I'm going to double click and you can see that it's added that home to me in my document and that's great. I'm going to just move this over a little bit smaller so you can see. There you go. So now you can see that. So the first thing that I might want to do is I might want to rasterize that layer because I don't really want it to be a smart object anymore. And um, um, from there, what I might want to do is uh, I might want to copy that layer uh, a couple of times. So I'm actually going to do that. And then what I'm going to do is just change the name. So the top one is going to become up. The next one will become, say, over. The next one will be, say, down. And the last one will be active. So there we go. So we've got our um, our layers named in and all ready to go. The thing is is that I, I, I really want to change the colors of them. So for me, one of the fastest and down and dirty ways to do that is to just simply select uh, the background area and then Command Shift I, which then in turn selects the inner area. Now I can just go to my up button and then I can pick what color I want to do. I want to create kind of a gunmetal blue, but I want it a little more blue. There we go. So I get a little blue and then one of my favorite tricks in Photoshop is to always fill with the foreground color which is a hit an option delete on your keyboard uh, and then I want to have on my overstate I want to have it maybe a different color so I could actually select my background color and um, maybe I want to make that more of a, a, a charcoal -y gray and I'm going to do that and then I can actually hit command um, uh, um, delete to, in order to change that to charcoal so I've got that and then maybe I want this to be another different color so I'll double click that again and maybe I want to make it a little lighter blue so I'll make it a little lighter blue and again fill with foreground color is option delete and then the active state well I definitely don't want black and because I'm staying in those shades of blue let's stay with it blue but I'm gonna make it a little bit uh, blue gray I should say a little bit more gunmetal uh, command delete and there we go we got my four states so if I turn them on here's my active there's my down there's my over and there's my up so I've got my four states and I'm all set and ready to go the next thing I want to do is I, I, I would personally just delete this background layer because I don't need it and so I just get rid of it and then I'm going to hit deselect to deselect my area and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the to, to the image trim and I want to trim everything around I want to just get rid of everything top bottom left right and I'm going to clear it bang now I've got a nice neat trimmed little um, house uh, element for me I'm going to actually save this so I'm just going to save this and it's going to come up and ask me what I want to save it and I'm going to save it as home PS button states just so I have something that makes sense for me um, I'm gonna save it into my folder for my demo muse into my images and I'm just gonna save it right there click OK and now I can jump over to muse and over in muse I can now uh, make sure I'm in the design mode I can now come in and do place Photoshop button when I do hit place Photoshop button, it's going to ask me where do I want to go. Um, so I'm going to go to the same place, which was over here, websites, 
demo muse images and there's my Photoshop button and you can see that there is the um, preview of for it going to scroll up so you can see I'm just going to click open and then here's where it gets cool so you can see that what happens is is muse looks at that layer and it says all right so I want to use the composite layer which would be all of them or in most cases it's the same thing as the up layer the over layer the down layer and the active layer and you can see that they match up perfectly which is great so now I'm going to click OK what's going to happen is it's going to load my cursor there's my image as I told you it was a bit large but for this demonstration I thought it was an important thing to do and then I can now preview this and now when I mouse over down and if this were active it would give me the active state pretty cool pretty straightforward and of course I don't think it's the best way to handle things but you certainly could do it ideally you want to bring your image in at the at the size as close as you uh, as possible as you want it so I'm just gonna go back and bring that image in click OK the same thing get my loaded cursor and you can see I could bring it in smaller uh, and it will work the only thing is, is that as a general rule of thumb, you want to make your image as close to the actual size as you actually want the button. So you want to keep that in mind whenever you're working with creating Photoshop buttons for Muse. You want to create them close to the actual size as you possibly can. Hope this was a quick one and a good one. See you soon.